What's up, guys? My name is Christian French, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I was just hanging out with Hoodie Allen, like, maybe, yeah. like, two and a half weeks ago. Nice. And we were talking about, his obviously, his new album, and yeah. then that collaboration you guys did. Talk to me about that collaboration and, like, teaming up with him in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of grew up listening to him. Um, throughout high school, I was, like, an absolute fanboy. Like, I definitely went to his shows all yeah. throughout uh, high school. Still am a fan, of course. Um, and, you know, just getting to work with him was, was nuts. He just texted me. He was like, yo, man, I'm, I'm here in L.A. It happened to be uh, in a session with, uh, with the same guys that produced Breaking All the Rules, yeah. uh, the song that I released. And so... Yeah, it just came really naturally, and um, you know, we just had two days in the studio to knock that whole song out, and knocked it out too easy. And it's uh, it's one of my favorite songs. It's just like a super fun summary jam. Yeah. Now, how crazy is it for you, like you know, growing up listening to this artist, and then all of a sudden, like you guys kind of get to do stuff together. Like who knows, maybe even like a tour, right. you know, after this. But you know, how crazy is that for you to go into the studio and do something like that? Yeah, it's it's really full circle. Um, just like. I don't know, I wasn't really a musician at all for the first, like, five years. I was posting just covers on SoundCloud, and that was, like, the extent of my music career. Yeah. Um, and so seeing stuff like this come full circle is really crazy to me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's that's that's really all I got to say. It's yeah. just, it just feels like it's supposed to happen, though. Um, right. It's not – I don't like to, like, sit and, like, freak out and be like, holy shit, like, this and that. Like, just got to treat it like a pro. Be, yeah. It's all natural. It's, like, what's supposed to happen. Now, one thing I noticed with him is that he tends to get these artists before they are the big name that they are today, you know? So, you know, you're one of them. Gianni and Kyle was another one who I was with last night, too. So it's like I'm no just way. I'm just doing like a whatever USA tour right now. <laughs> but <laughs> but, you know, like he discovered you. So are you as you're kind of like working on your music? Are you kind of discovering artists like brand new artists that you would like to collaborate with, with as well? Yeah, totally. Um one of my favorite things to do is just kind of dig through Spotify, um, mm. find like the underground artists that nobody knows about. So right. you can kind of show everybody like, yeah, I showed you that <laughs> artist. Um, but yeah, I mean, for example, we have Austin on our tour. Who's, who's an amazing artist. Um, I wouldn't say by any means he's underground, but like he's, he's definitely somebody that I'm really stoked that I get to bring him on tour because I've got a lot of faith in him. I got a lot, like I believe in him a lot. He's got a lot of talent. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just, will continue to to look at the underground artists and you know if i find one that fits like i'll definitely be hitting them up about a collaboration right. um but you know so far i've been trying to keep a lot of my music just just me to kind of get you know my word out there um and kind of make it the christian french project i don't want to be like the one that's just always collaborating here and there right, that's true. um so there's there's going to be a good balance with it um but we we've just taken our time to make sure it's the right fit right so right now you're you're getting ready you're prepping for tour um you know in support of this this new ep bright side of the moon so like talk to me about creating this ep like this is not your first project so you know how different are you this time in the studio as you go in and, and create it yeah i mean just just a little bit more experienced, a little bit more mature this time around. Um, you know, this this EP came about after being in L.A. for about a full year. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first year I've really gotten the time to, you know, instead of focus on pre-med and being on the hockey team and doing music at the same time, it's like for the first time in my life I get to, you know, kind of study, I guess, that studies the word, uh, exactly what I want. And so um, – on the Chelsea Cutler tour, uh, her drummer, Gavin, um, gave me three books to read throughout the tour. They were uh, The Alchemist, uh, The Four Agreements, and The Mastery of Love. And so those were like kind of my first uh, introduction to like self-help mm -hmm. type of books. And I just loved them, like super loved them. And they immediately just helped with my mood, helped with, you know, just my whole lifestyle on tour and after. Helped, just helped me grow a lot. And so... Um, I just, I really, the way that it made me feel made me want to write about it and made yeah. me want to, uh, you know, kind of put that type of self-help into, into writing so that, you know, other people could hear it and like hopefully grow from it as well. Um, and so, yeah, this is like, I don't know, this is the first year that I've kind of like had the time to build my own, I guess, what I want to focus on right. really other than like, um, you know, just writing about relationships, which, which is not bad by any means. I still love writing a good love song when I'm inspired. Right. Um, sure. but I've just been very inspired by this, this whole self-help, um, type, type thing. So Gavin kind of inspired this, this new EP. Is that, is that safe to say? Do sure. we give him credit or not? Like <laughs> I'll give, I'll give Gavin, Gavin a couple points on the, on the record. Yeah. Um, no, 
he's for sure had uh, a big impact on kind of the person that I've grown into this past year. Yeah. Um, whether he knows it or not, he has. Totally has. So aside from, you know, the self-help that you kind of, that kind of inspired you and, you know, being on tour with Chelsea, but not just Chelsea, just being on tour in general, like, did that kind of impact the way that you wrote this, this record? Like, because now you're thinking about the live show. You're, um, you know, right now you're rehearsing, getting ready for that tour. So did you think of any of this while you were writing this, these songs? Yeah, totally. I mean, the whole idea of Bright Side of the Moon kind of stems back to, to being on tour. You know, you're, if you're in a two-month tour, like, emotions are going like this and uh you know towards the end of it it's just some some days it's really tough to you know get up there and have a smile on your face um but being on tour was a blessing in that it kind of made you get over just the little things that were in your head that you know you were holding on to that that was putting you in a bad mood but not really anybody else's problem right. um and so it was really important for just like getting over stupid shit and like you know then being able to get on stage and have a smile on your face like night after night um and so tour was really good for for helping me learn to just like push off the negative like little bullshit i got going in my brain and just right. like you know it, it forces you to look at the positives of every situation and right. so that's the entire idea of the ep and who's your team behind the CP production wise? Like who did you go into the studio to get this produced with? Um, this was uh this kind of goes back to the point about my first project compared to this project again. Um my first project, Natural Colors, was pretty much only with uh Drew DeCaro, mm -hmm. who is my main producer. Um and this time around was a little bit more collaborative. I started finding who I wanted to work with more. Um right. And so Drew is still the guy that oversees everything. I, I just love having his touch on the record. Um, but, you know, Head First was produced by Andrew Luce. Um, Breaking All the Rules was produced by uh, David Von Maring and Yoji Money, who have produced some Quinn 92 records and, Wait, you know, some other great records. Yeah. Um, and then my guitarist uh, produced, helped produce three of the records as well, which was great. I'm so happy to get him, you know, included in all this. Um, obviously, Drew. And then um, Ahmad Royale and Sam Fisher and Jesse Fink helped me on um, okay. on Bryce Side of the Moon. And Sam Fisher, he's an artist too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sam is. Uh, I didn't know he produced also. No, he yeah he's a writer, and so okay. he helped me uh, he helped me write Bryce Side of the Moon and helped me write many other songs that we made. After those couple days in the studio, we were like, all right, we got something great going. <laughs> we had another week booked out of, of Just Us, and so we've got a whole bunch of secret records That's that nobody sick. knows about yet. That's yeah. So talk to me about the writing process. Now that you have collaborators with you with, with the writing, like, you know, what did you pick up from these sessions, and how different were they for you? Yeah, I mean, some, some sessions work, some don't, and I've kind of figured out what works for me and what doesn't. Um, for the most part... I either start my songs with um, an idea that I've kind of just collected and then put down in my journal. Mm -hmm. um, just ma whether it's a song title, whether it's just a concept, and then I just kind of like bullet point out ideas based off of that concept and kind of build a whole idea behind it. And then, um, you know, then I'll sit down on the piano and mess with it a little bit, find the chords I want, um, and then write the song that way. Yeah. Or that's one kind of way I do it is when I'm writing by myself, I kind of just go to the piano. Um, but if I'm bringing an idea to a session, um, you know, I just kind of have these notes so that who I'm writing with has an idea mm -hmm. of what I want to write about. And so that's one thing I love about Sam is Sam is like, he gets what I'm saying right. and gets what I like writing about in my journal and um, really helps me pull the idea together and just get it to the finish line. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I've been doing. How do you deal with, like, vulnerability when you go into the studio with, like, a new writer, a new producer? Like, um, especially, like, these love songs, if you if you sit down and you open up about a relationship that you had or whatnot, like, how do you open up to them? Uh, that's a good question. It just comes with, I don't know, just the feeling in the room. Yeah. Um, I can kind of tell when things are going the direction that I want them to go, and, and that makes me feel really comfortable. Um I knew who Sam was. I knew who Ahmad was before meeting them um, and, and knew that they'd be a comfortable fit for me. And so, you know, I knew that in order to get the best, the best out, I needed to be the most vulnerable I could. And right. so I think, I think that's just part of making the best record that you can with somebody is being completely transparent and not really like holding anything back. And I feel like I've gotten pretty good at being transparent with who I need to be transparent with. Yeah. 
Now with the CP, like, did you feel like any song challenged you at all in the, uh, you know, whether it was like the writing process or the actual production process of it? Um, so Call Me Your Love took a total of two years from start to finish. Um, yeah, I wrote that uh, two summers ago and had been kind of just like going back and forth with production here and there, like couldn't find the right fit. Yeah. Um, and Warren and I made this instrumental, which is now the instrumental for it, and we just happened to be the perfect fit. Um, so uh, that was a struggle. Hungover Sunday took uh, four different vocal cuts, uh, four different guitar cuts. We lost the whole entire project, had to start from scratch. <laughs> um, that track really tested That's my stressful. patience. It That's tested stressful. my patience to, to, the, to no end. But, um, you know, after, after you get to the finish line, you're like, okay, that's, that's why we did all that work. Right. Um, and so that was a great learning experience for me. I'd never really, like, had to put that much grit into a record <laughs> before and really, like, get it out, get it out like that. And so... Um, yeah, that was really testing. Um, and then ideas like Bright Side of the Moon, I just kind of like, I've learned to be more patient with my ideas. Um, I've learned to like sleep on some ideas. It doesn't have to be a start to finish record the first yeah. time you, you know, you try to write it. And so I sat with the, just the idea of Bright Side of the Moon and like bullet pointed list for, mm -hmm. for like a month or two before I even brought it to writing. Damn. Yeah. So with, with Hungover Sunday, like because it got, it, you know, it just disappeared all of a sudden. What was it about that track that you wanted to go through the trouble of recreating that that song for the EP? Just just the original feeling yeah. I had with it. Um, you know, it's it's really easy to I tend to just listen to demos over and over and over again until the the shine has weared off, but or worn off. But um, yeah, this one I just I just remembered how I felt like when we first made the record, and you know, the lyrics the the song is it's true. I mean, it's about me being at college with my girlfriend and that's like just our Sunday routine. And so it was super genuine, super true. And it was just a huge waste to me if we, you know, didn't follow through with it just because we lost a, lost the track. But then being that it is such a personal song, like I feel like those are the types of songs that you want to record that first vocal. Like you don't want to re-record it many times. So, you know, <laughs> what was that like for you? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, this song just <laughs> broke my back. Uh, but like that's that's how it goes sometimes yeah. and i've totally come to realize that and it's just it's just sitting down and coming back to that feeling um that's why perfectly like you said that's why um you know the second and the third recording didn't work was mm. it wasn't the same genuine like off off the dome feeling but yeah. it just took like kind of getting into that mindset again to to get to get it out how i wanted it right now this ep's out now and you know if you haven't already i'd love for you to try and like get into the studio with Andrew Goldstein. I don't know if you know him, but yeah. he is like a sick producer and I, I'm pretty sure he's also a writer too, Great. but I'd like to see what the two of you can kind of like put together. Sweet. I don't know. Maybe the next EP, up. next album. I'll hit him up. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Sweet, man. Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, you're, what was that? I just said, appreciate you talking to me. Yeah, dude, for sure. So you're about to get ready for this tour that that's about to kick off in like less than a week. Um, yeah. What can fans expect on this tour? What's so different this time around? Uh, this is our first tour that, get to build our own stage, get to have our own set. You know, it's, it's, it's been, um, it's been 30, 45 minute sets, opening slots, uh, for my whole career so far. And this is the first time it's like, I get to play every song that I want and you get to play some stripped back acoustically. Um, I get to play some unreleased stuff. I just like get to have a drummer this time. There's just so many new elements. That's like, just a completely different set. Sick. I'm so excited. Definitely look forward to that. So you guys be sure to check out the Bright Side of the Moon tour. Get the new EP now, Bright Side of the Moon. And thanks for watching, hanging out here with Christian French. Thanks for watching on Front Row Live.